In the opening scene, we are introduced to a 21-year-old guy named Tim Lake who resides in Cornwall near the seas. He lives with his retired father, James, his busy mother, Mary, and his free-spirited younger sister, Catherine. Tim narrates that his family has a daily tradition of going to the beach for tea and enjoying movies in the yard every weekend, regardless of the weather. In the next scene, the family organizes a New Year's Eve celebration party, which Tim isn't particularly enthusiastic about. During the event, Tim and his best friend Jay accidentally stumble into a table, causing drinks and bottles to spill onto some guests. Later, Catherine hooks up with a man named Jimmy Kincaid, while a charming young blonde woman shows interest in Tim. When the countdown to midnight begins, the woman leans in to kiss Tim, but he instead shakes her hand and wishes her a happy new year. The woman is clearly disappointed by this as others around them exchange kisses with their loved ones. For her, the ball that's dropping is blue. The next day, Tim is summoned by his father for a private conversation. As Tim has turned 21, James discloses a significant family secret to him, explaining that the men in their family possess the ability to travel back in time to moments that they have experienced before. Initially skeptical, Tim gradually realizes that his father is serious. To provide evidence, James instructs Tim to enter a dark space, like a closet, close his eyes, clench his fists tightly, and concentrate on the precise moment he wants to revisit. By doing so, he will find himself transported to that moment. Doubtful but intrigued, Tim enters the wardrobe in his bedroom to test this. He focuses on the previous day's party and, to his astonishment, finds himself wearing the same outfit from yesterday. Surprised by this newfound ability, Tim walks into the party once again, and this time, he avoids bumping into the table. When the midnight countdown commences, he confidently approaches the blonde woman and shares a satisfying kiss with her. Following this, Tim returns to the present and discusses more about the time-traveling ability with his father. James mentions that he has used this ability for many things things in his life, but not for money or fame, but certainly to bang your mom many a time, Timmy. He also advises his son to do the same. Tim says, okay, except for the mom part, and decides to utilize it to enhance his romantic life. As the summer season rolls around, Catherine's friend Charlotte pays her a visit, and Tim is instantly captivated by her. One day, while the girls are sunbathing, Charlotte asks Tim to apply sunscreen to her back. The shy nerd becomes excited at the opportunity, but when he squeezes the tube, an excessive amount of sunscreen sunscreen squirts onto Charlotte's back, causing an awkward moment. Feeling embarrassed, Tim hurriedly retreats to the house and enters a closet, traveling back in time to that exact moment. This time, he approaches the task with more caution and gently applies sunscreen to Charlotte's back. If that sunscreen tube wasn't a euphemism, I don't know what is in this life. On the final day of Charlotte's visit, Tim gathers the courage to go to her room and confess his feelings. Unfortunately, she informs him that he shouldn't have waited until her last night and that he should have expressed himself earlier. This prompts Tim to travel back in time again to disclose his feelings to Charlotte in the middle of her stay. However, she once again brushes him aside, saying he should wait till her last day. In reality, she is just trying to ignore him. Heartbroken, Tim eventually realizes that regardless of how many times he travels back in time, he cannot change someone's decision or feelings. After the summer vacation, Tim moves to London in order to pursue a career as a lawyer. He resides with Harry, an acquaintance of his father's who is a bitter and cynical playwright. Tim begins working at a law firm and befriends a young man named Rory while also searching for a girlfriend. Unfortunately, luck doesn't favor Tim, and six months pass without any romantic prospects in his life. One evening, Tim and Jay visit a restaurant called Dans Le Noir, where they are paired up with blind dates in a dark room. During this unique experience, they meet two girls, Mary and Joanna. Tim spends the evening engaging in conversation with Mary, while Jay interacts with Joanna. Tim and Mary flirt in the darkness, and their conversation indicates that they're enjoying each other's company. Later, when they meet outside, Tim is captivated by Mary's beauty even though she doesn't perceive herself as particularly attractive. Consequently, he manages to obtain her phone number before parting ways. Following this, Tim happily returns home, only to learn that Harry's new play went horribly wrong. It turns out the lead actor forgot his lines. Determined to help him, Tim travels back in time and attends Harry's ongoing play. When the actor struggles with his lines, Tim discreetly holds up cue cards from backstage, helping the actor to deliver his lines perfectly. As a result, the play goes smoothly and eventually becomes a success. However, the this action also leads to a big problem. When Tim attempts to contact Mary, he realizes that his time travel has erased the evening he spent with her. In a desperate attempt to gather information about Mary, he rushes to the Dons Le Noir restaurant, but his efforts prove fruitless. The next morning, Harry comes across a glowing review of his play in the newspaper. Coincidentally, Tim notices an advertisement featuring Kate Moss, triggering his memory of Mary's fascination with the famous celebrity. In light of this, Tim decides to visit an ongoing Kate Moss exhibition, hoping to find Mary there. After a week, 
she finally appears, and Tim seizes the opportunity to approach her. They reintroduce themselves and begin to reconnect, but Tim discovers that Mary now has a boyfriend. Consumed by jealousy, he starts probing for details about how they met, which turned out to be a party hosted by Joanna. Once Tim gets all the information he needs, he travels back in time to alter the course of events. In the next scene, he shows up at the party, quite early and before the potential boyfriend arrives. He then approaches Mary, who is sitting near the window, and initiates a conversation. Although things go awkwardly for the first few moments, Tim manages to persuade her to leave the party and have dinner together, preventing her from meeting the new guy. Dude got cucked by Doctor Who and doesn't even know it. During their first date, Tim brings up the topic of Kate Moss, and as the conversation unfolds, he learns that Mary works for a book publisher. After an enjoyable dinner, Tim walks Mary home, and upon arrival, she invites him inside, where they start making out. Being their first time, it doesn't go smoothly. So, Tim remembers the sunscreen tube and decides to travel back in time to relive the experience, which turns out to be more satisfying. From that day onward, their relationship begins to blossom, and Tim eventually moves in with Mary. One fine day, Mary surprises Tim by informing him at the last minute that her parents are coming to visit from America. She emphasizes that he must avoid mentioning any intimate details about their relationship, as her parents are a bit conservative. But later, Tim foolishly blurts it all out, leading to an embarrassing situation. Feeling ashamed, Tim retreats to a nearby closet and travels back in time to rectify his mistake. After this alteration, the two share a meal with her parents, during which Mary admits her love for Tim. A few days later, Tim attends a play at a theater, where he notices Charlotte with her friend in the audience. After the play concludes, Tim approaches them to say hello. As the two talk, Charlotte reveals that she regrets rejecting his proposal earlier. She now wants to know him better, so she invites him for dinner. Tim happily accepts, but once they're done eating, Charlotte unexpectedly invites him to her place. Tim realizes that she wants to have coitus with him, so he politely declines and leaves. This encounter prompts Tim to realize the depth of his love for Mary, so he rushes back home and proposes to her in bed. Delighted, Mary joyfully accepts the proposal. The following summer, Tim and Mary visit his parents' home and introduce her to his family. In a very short period of time, Mary grows closer to Tim's family, who also develop a fondness for her. During a family dinner, Tim announces that they're marrying soon and also shares the news of Mary's pregnancy, making everyone happy. The long-awaited wedding day finally arrives, and despite a storm disrupting the party venue, the ceremony is filled with romance and laughter. Rory, serving as the best man, delivers an awkward speech during the reception. In response, Tim travels back in time and chooses <laughs> Harry as his best man. However, Harry's remarks turn out to be rude as well, prompting Tim to travel back once more and ultimately select his father, who manages to deliver a heartfelt speech befitting the occasion. A few months later, Mary gives birth to a beautiful baby girl, whom they name as Posey. Then, the family moves into their own new house. Despite their struggle with finances, Tim narrates that their happiness overrides any financial concerns. He also reflects that time travel is no longer necessary for him, as he now cherishes and embraces every moment of his life. The scene then switches to Posey's first birthday, where Tim's family, Harry, and Rory gather to celebrate, with the exception of Catherine. Shortly after, Jimmy shows up and tells them about Catherine, who is driving drunk after an argument with him. It turns out that Catherine has unfortunately met with an accident while she was on the way to Tim's place. Terrified, Tim quickly uses his time travel ability and saves his sister from her ill-fated journey. After the birthday party, Tim and Mary discuss Catherine's predicament. Tim realizes that merely saving her from the accident hasn't resolved the issues she faces, including problems with her boyfriend and her drinking habits. Therefore, he decides to intervene in her life to prevent further troubles. Tim then reveals his time-traveling secret to Catherine and takes her to a closet, intending to go back to the New Year's Eve party where she first met Jimmy. This time, he prevents her from approaching Jimmy, and they later see him showing interest in another girl. This makes Catherine realize that Jimmy is just a playboy. So, she confronts him and punches him in the face. Poor Jimmy, who has no idea who the girl is, simply stares in disbelief. Following this, the siblings return to the present, where the entire situation has been modified, and Catherine now develops feelings for Jay. Her relationship with Jay proves to be much healthier compared to her previous one with Jimmy. Tim is relieved by this outcome and returns home. However, upon arrival, he shockingly discovers that Posey has never been born, and instead, he has a son. Concerned, Tim promptly travels back in time to the day of his child's birth to seek guidance from his father. James explains that they cannot alter events that transpired before their children's conception, ensuring that the exact child will still be conceived. This means that if Tim wishes to preserve Posey's existence, he cannot change anything that occurred prior to her birth. Therefore, 
Tim accepts that he cannot alter his sister's life by modifying her past and allows the accident to take place, ensuring Posey's birth. While Catherine is hospitalized, Tim and Mary remain by her side until she realizes that she must take responsibility for improving her own life. Mary suggests that she should date someone who treats her well, and Tim recommends Jay. Once Catherine is discharged from the hospital, Tim returns home and is overjoyed to reunite with his little girl. As he plays with Posey, he subtly indicates to Mary that they should have another child, though initially hesitant. They ultimately welcome a baby boy into their lives two years later, completing their small, happy family. One evening, Tim and Mary prepare to go out for dinner with the latter's publisher. For this, Mary tries on multiple outfits, but feels dissatisfied, despite Tim assuring her that she looks beautiful in anything. Finally, Mary chooses the very first dress she tried on. After getting ready, they head downstairs, only to discover that their daughter has accidentally destroyed Mary's important manuscript. Tim contemplates using time travel to rectify the situation, but at the same time, they receive a phone call from Tim's mother, informing them that his father has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Devastated by the news, Tim, Mary, and Catherine visit their parents' home. While there, Tim engages in a private conversation with his father, who explains that time travel cannot cure his illness, since undoing his smoking habit in the past would prevent Tim and Catherine from being conceived. James admits that he had been utilizing time travel to extend his life and spend more time with his family. With only a few weeks left to live, James tells Tim to live each each day twice in order to be truly happy. First, with all the everyday tensions and worries, and the second time, with all the sweet things. Tim takes his father's advice to heart and discovers happiness in his life. However, there are certain days that are better to be lived only once, like the day that his father passes away. On the funeral day, as everyone prepares to say their final goodbyes, Tim, unwilling to bid farewell, travels back in time to spend a moment with his father. This provides him with a small measure of comfort, as he realizes he can always travel to the past whenever he misses his father. Several days after the funeral, Mary expresses her desire to have a third child. Tim initially hesitates because that would mean that he could no longer visit his late father. However, after thoughtful consideration, he realizes that his ultimate source of happiness lies in being a loving father himself with the woman that he loves. With this, he agrees to Mary's wish. As nine months pass, Mary's due date approaches. Before the momentous occasion, Tim pays a final visit to his father and mentions that he won't be able to visit him anymore. In their final meeting, the father and son travel back in time to relive a cherished memory from Tim's early childhood, ensuring that they don't alter any experiences to preserve the integrity of the present. That was incredibly risky. Back to the present, Mary gives birth to a baby girl, and Tim gradually comes to terms with the loss of his father. Elsewhere, Catherine is shown with her own baby, having started a family with Jay. The movie concludes as Tim embraces his ordinary yet contented life, realizing the importance of living each day only once. From that point onward, he decides to stop using time travel once and for all. It's a touching message, but if Timmy didn't have time traveling abilities, he'd have never been this happy. So, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.